What's going on, y'all? This is Tucker Pacino. Honest, undeniably great with the gift of intelligence everlasting. Look here, man. Jermaine Dupri, he's right, but he's also full of shit. And we're going to break this down in, 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 simple, in, simple, in a simple understanding here. You saying that the brat broke the mold for female rappers, right? We all know the brat came out in 93. And the song was The Bomb by Criss Cross, right? It's all going to make sense. I want y'all to just follow me for a moment. You're the same producer, CEO, from Atlanta, which I'm throwing it out there. Atlanta is a copycat motherfucking town when it comes to hip-hop. Let's just keep it real. Oh, y'all don't believe me? Well, let's put it in proper perspective. Criss Cross was a bite off of Naughty by Nature. I want y'all to think about it for a moment. We down with OPP. Yeah, you know me. Jump, jump. Uh, 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 uh. Same little hip hop type rugged little sound with the. I mean, y'all, y'all ain't okay. That ain't making sense. Okay, maybe this will make sense. Y'all remember the bomb? Y'all remember Funkified? Baptized in the funk with that little G funk sound that you know Dre and Daz and. Warren G and Superfly, you know, all these people came up with on the West Coast. And you tried to make, you know, put on the brat with khakis and because, you know, people in Chicago didn't dress like that in 93, 94, bro. So you turned the brat into somewhat of a G-Funk style rapper from Chicago by way of you, the producer from Atlanta. You bit this down and you knew, okay, I could use crisscross and bite off of Naughty by Nature's style and use them as a Naughty by Nature copy. And then I could use the bread as a copy of the G-Funk sound. Oh, am I over-exaggerating here? Go listen to Dr. Dre and Eminem say what you say. What Dre said, uh, I'm trying to do it without looking it up. He said... He said, little me with a little bunch of mini U's running around your backyard swimming pool. Over, I think he said, under 80 million or 100 million records sold. Now you have to do it with 10 or 11 year olds. He basically was saying that Jermaine Dupri was a biter. He even bit off of Timberland. And that's why Timberland was at the end of the set record, you know, dissing him too. Copycats come from Atlanta. I mean, it's not up for debate that the Migos are biting off the 3 6 style. And many other rappers have bit off the sound. They just have more of an updated production uh, quality. So to speak But the style that the Migos use The style that Crime Mob use The style that Little Baby use All these different rappers Have really pretty much bit off the Memphis sound And they just mixed it up That's why if you go listen to 21 Savage They using that old 4 track sound That we used in 89, 90, 91 You know what I'm saying I can go deep into uh, DJ Spanish Fly And Gangsta Pat You know which was way before Atlanta even had a rap scene At all Cause let's just be real The pioneers of Atlanta rap is outcast. Of course, it could be you know Kilo G, you know Raheem the Dream, and you know uh, I get that. But let's just be real here. The pioneer of Shad D, shout out to Shad D. But that sound was more of a Miami based sound because they didn't have an identity, so they were still in the the Miami sound. Miami originated the bass sound, so that was what they more they gravitated to that more than they realized that Miami was a little bit too close to Atlanta. Let's go over to, let's go Northwest. Let's take a sound and let's be real here. Atlanta, uh, Alabama didn't have a fucking sound like that in the, in the early 90s, 80s. Uh, Georgia didn't, of course. Arkansas didn't have a sound. They didn't even have a rap scene. Louisiana had a sound. They had more of a bounce sound. Texas had more of a, a, a rugged, you know, kind of a mixture between the West Coast and the Southern, you know, rugged, little Southern heavy bass sound. You know, where they screwed up the music. I'm talking a little bit too much. J JD is a fucking biter. But he's right about the whole stripper female rapper thing. And we're going to break this down as well. When I look at people like Cardi B. If Cardi B was not rapping, she'd be a stripper. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And if it wasn't for Mona Scott and Love and Hip Hop, she would be nobody. I remember when she came out with that cheap ass weave song, nobody liked her. They hated it. To me, honestly, we know 
even with the help of writers and shit like that, Cardi B has became who she became. But let's just be real here. Even with the help, she's still not a lyricist. Now, he's right about the fact that strippers are not that turn rappers are not really focused on that craft enough. But it's a bunch of rappers that's coming out that's pretty much the same as Cardi B. Now, I'm not saying lyrical content because I'm, go I'm understand that there's going to be females that use the word bitch. There's going to be females who use sexualized type lyrics. But some of these rappers are really not even their content is repetitive as shit. Like they be like, bitch, bitch and hoe and I got money and I'm going to be the bitch and fuck your man and suck. Like that shit is whack. What, I'm tired of hearing ladies that don't act ladylike. Why is that hard for people to understand on my, from my perspective? I want to hear a woman that sound more of a female who actually can be like lyrical without talking about sex, without talking about beating somebody up. Tell us your story. Like, give us a real story. Like, I look at Meg Thee Stallion. No. Lizzo. No. Cupcake. No. Uh... Nicki Minaj, you know, Nicki Minaj was nice. She was okay, but she was, you know, so was Lil' Cam okay. And Foxy Brown was was dope, but like Foxy Brown and Lil' Cam didn't write their own shit. Are they good writers of, the, of their own? Yeah, they can write, but a lot of the shit that they did that made them a household name, they didn't write a lot of the shit. That's not up for debate either. That shouldn't even be on a list of good feet, the best females. Now, when I look at people like Gangsta Boo and Lil' Chat, this is what they also run to. And they say, oh, these were good rappers. Yo, Gangsta Boo and Lil Chad was decent. You know who was a lyricist in the South that don't get the respect she deserved that came up in the 90s? Mia X. Mia X was a lyrical monster. L Mia X was a poet. She just was more of a street girl. And that's what she gravitated to. But when she had a story to tell, she could tell you the story about her baby dad that died of gun violence hanging in the streets. She could tell you that story. But then, you know, another thing that pisses me off about female rappers, we have these city girls and everybody loves the city girls. And I think it's sad that one of these girls was dating a, a guy. I think she was 12. Oh, no, no. I think she said she was 15. No, I think she said she was 12 and she was dating a 15 year old. And I was like, and they both were in like, I think he was in the eighth grade of some shit, and she was in the tenth grade. I, I could I could be wrong here. I think she was 15 in the eighth grade, and I think she was 12 in the fucking fourth grade of some shit. I'm paraphrasing. I forget the actual number. Both of them motherfuckers was dumb as shit. But the girl is actually dumb. Like in the fucking interview, she don't even know how to fucking speak and complete please sentences. I don't want to hear nothing about a Florida accent. None of that. Like, Florida does have, like, heavy accents with, with the actual accents they have. But that don't mean they're supposed to sound that way. It's what they, their answers to the questions make them sound stupid. The things that they say make them sound stupid. This has nothing to do with, oh, their, their accent. They sound this way. They say their words that way. And they slur their words. Like, yo, for real, city girls is, like, fucking weird. They, like, they're not what female rappers should be and then what happens is the black people especially black women will sit back and say look at how they look at us i'm like look at what y'all support y'all support the love in hip-hop y'all support the cardi b's y'all support the cupcakes y'all support the ricos and y'all support the Nicki minaj and city girls and remy ma y'all support all that shit is remy ma a good battle rapper she's a, she's an okay battle rapper as far as like lyrical content, Shawty ain't got a story to tell either. She ain't make but one album her whole fucking life. <laughs> There's something about Remy's the only album she can say I got. Now, if you want to compare that to Lauren Hill, which is arguably the best female MC of all time, period, up not up for debate. She only got one album, and she can always put that on her mantle and say. This shit was incredible, but I'm also going to give be fair, even though she's one of the best MCs, that whole album is not hip hop. It's a mixture of R&B and hip hop. So I can't never put that in the class of classic hip hops. Now, that's going to be something people argue with. I get it. But Cash Doll is another one like, yo, a Doja. A lot of these a lot of these rappers are not even on a good level to even sit up here and argue that black uh, that that uh female MC in the mainstream circuit is on a good level. No, it's not on a good level. 
It's actually horrible. Actually, mainstream hip hop is on a horrible fucking place. It's, it's, it's not good. It's not in a good place. Now, there's a lot of good independent artists, underground artists who do a, do a good job out here. But I can run down a bunch of names. Y'all be like, who the fuck is that? <laughs> the person I'm playing in the background, that's Rhapsody. Rhapsody in this era, bar none, bar for bar, is the best. The best. And the only rappers that can stand next to her is, uh, so it's Ty Phoenix, uh, Bia from Boston, uh, No Name from Chicago. Uh, it's another female from Chicago. Uh, I was just thinking about her. Uh, goodness. I think, so. yeah, Supreme is from, uh, Chicago. You got Nitty Scott from the Bronx. Uh, Jean Grey from, from New York. Jean Grey. She's 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 been around. She came out way before Rhapsody, and I saw Jean Grey's career just stay underground, stay independent. She's never been a mainstream attraction. I get that, but Jean Grey is like arguably right next to Rhapsody, as far as best MCs, bar for bar. You know, what I'm saying body of work and everything. But the I'll get to call these names. I don't know, but look them up. Jean Grey, No Name, Rhapsody, Nitty Scott MC, Angel Hayes. Uh, it's a couple of them that are in the mainstream circuit that are dope, but they don't get the notice. Like Rhapsody is in the mainstream circuit now, but she's been out for almost ten years and been ignored by a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? Snow the product, uh, another one that's a dope MC. Even though she's Mexican, she's still a dope MC. Gifted Gab is a dope MC. Psalms One is a dope MC. Syrah. Is a dope MC. Red Fox, Invincible, uh, Yanni Mo, uh, Jungle Pussy. It's a Kamaya. It's a, a lot. Of, it's a lot of dope female MCs that nobody knows about because y'all so busy stuck on the bullshit. And all these rappers I name, that that content is rarely about sex. Rarely about what they gonna do to somebody. Be on on a violent on a violent manner or. Or, or pretty much being overly sexualized, showing their breasts and, you know, all this raunchiness. You understand? I think women need to start respecting women, being women in, in the female rap, you know, business. Because the sexualization of females in hip-hop wasn't a thing until Lil' Kim hit the scene. Y'all don't even realize that. And then we sit back and say, we need another Lil' Kim. And then y'all get Nicki. And then y'all say, we need another Nicki. And then y'all get Cardi. So who's going to be the next Cardi? Oh, my bad. But then they talk about, well, there's no other rapper that's getting the shine. Okay, look at Cardi. City Girls is just as big as them. Cash Doll is just as big as Cardi. Megan Thee Stallion is just as good as Cardi. As far as, on a, far as a popularity. Put it that way. But let's just keep it real here. Dej Loaf. I remember she had a, a, a mixtape that came out. It was called college. It was about college. And she was a real nice, cool, laid back MC. All of a sudden, I hear this Try Me song. I said, who the fuck is this? She's like a totally different person. You know what I'm saying? Harmonizing with the, with the voice and with the, with the vocals. And she talking gangster shit. I'm like, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. What did she just did a whole fucking full 180? And she's somebody else. So I don't know if it had something to do with the industry. I don't know if it was a contract. I don't know if it's something they made her out to be. I don't know. But that's not what the Dej Loaf I remember. Go look up the song called College from Dej Loaf. But Jay, Jermaine Dupree has a point. And he's still full of shit. Because, dude, you're the one that sitting up here bragging on the brat being the mold of female MCs. Bruh, the mold of female MCs is a bite off the West Coast G-Fuck sound. And naughty by nature, you use their style to make crisscross. You're not original, dude. You had an original R&B group called Escape. Shout out to you for that. We're just keeping it real, though. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of MCs out here, you know what I'm saying, that's not really getting no shine. And y'all should look up those names. And I'm going to run them again before we get up out of here. Uh, Jean Grey, uh, No Name, Rhapsody. That's R I P S O D Y. Uh, Nitty Scott MC, Angel Hayes, Snow the Product, Gifted Gab, Psalms One, Red Fox, uh, Yanni Mo, Cyrock, Invincible, FM Supreme, Ty Phoenix, Jungle Pussy, Bia, uh, and Kamaya. Uh, this is a few other names that I just can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, 
Look, listen, just Google. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of females out there that's worth listening to that we really need to put on a pedestal. It's kind of like talking about the Black Mermaid thing. Like, yo, it's so much shit we could be supporting and, and, and getting behind than just a Black Mermaid. Like, yo, so many Black characters we need to bring to life. It's a lot of biopics we need to put to life as well, especially when it comes to Black history. I'm just keeping it real. Like, I'm tired of these female MCs who sit back and now we got people like Jermaine Dupri stirring the pot when we sitting up and then Cardi B got something to say. And I'm like, yo, you should be humble. You ain't nothing but another little Kim. And you can't write. At least Lil' Kim could, right? Like we just go, we skip over the fact that be careful with somebody else's song. And then people, oh, we found out somebody else wrote it. They just swept it under the rug. Like, so what? Y'all pay attention to the talking heads on Breakfast Club. That they 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 are employed. They are pretty much partners with Atlantic. They defend everything Cardi B does. She actually mentioned and admitted to you know drugging guys and taking their money, and they swept that under the rug like it never happened. I'm talking a little bit too much, but y'all get my point, man. What y'all think? Tell me what's up. Huggy P, I'm out. Mm. That's Huggy Pacino certified. Chicken and corn. Why'd you stay out of business, boy?